The ancient Romans and Egyptians fashioned artificial eyes out of painted clay. By the 1500s, Europeans started making them out of enameled gold and soon out of glass, which remained the norm for hundreds of years. Today, most artificial eyes are made of acrylic. If you've lost an eye in an accident or to a disease, a specialist known as an ocularist can fit you with an artificial eye. You can get a ready-made model or a custom-made prosthesis like the one for which this patient's being fitted. No two people's eye sockets are the same, so the first step is to take an impression. After inserting the impression tray, they inject a material called alginate, filling the entire socket cavity. After 90 seconds, the alginate sets and they can remove the hardened impression. They place the impression in a mold and pour in a type of plaster. When the plaster has hardened, they remove the impression tray and then the impression itself. What's left in the mold is a plaster replica of the socket. Now they put a wad of acrylic plastic dough into the mold, lock the mold into a press, and submerge it in a high pressure curing unit for 25 minutes. Then they cool the mold in cold water. Here's the original impression compared to the acrylic model they've just cast. This model is called the fitting shape because they use it to fit and mark the positioning of the fake iris. They accentuate the markings, then attach a peg with a drop of wax. The peg indicates the natural angle of the iris when the patient is looking forward. Next, they add wax around the perimeter to enlarge the fitting shape. This excess will give the ocularist some play afterwards for the final sizing. Now they take this marked and enlarged fitting shape and make a plaster mold. They'll later use that mold to cast the actual artificial eye. But first, they have to make the iris. They take a curved black acrylic disc and paint it as realistically as possible with high quality artist's oils. The patient has to be present so they can match the real eye. Next, they glue an acrylic cornea with an appropriate size pupil onto the painted iris. At this point, the artificial iris is 13 millimeters in diameter. If the patient's real iris is smaller, they trim down the replica to match. The iris then goes into the plaster mold, covered with white acrylic dough. After the same high pressure curing process as before, out comes the artificial eye, covered with excess white acrylic. They trim off that excess and the peg using a grinding tool and a cutter. This refines the shape and exposes the iris buried underneath. They smooth the surface against a grinding stone and verify the measurements. Then, using hard coloring pencils, they add finishing touches to the iris and draw blood vessels. They label the eye with the patient's initials, then apply an acrylic coating to seal the pencil marks. To create veins with some dimension, they use the same acrylic coating to stick on some delicate silk threads. Once they're satisfied the artificial eye is a perfect match, they seal the artwork with another acrylic coating. Once that cures, they polish the eye to a shine with a cotton wheel. The shapes and colors of artificial eyes are endless because patients' eye sockets and irises greatly vary, as do their scleras, the white of the eye. This artificial eye, or ocular prosthesis, is ready. The final step is to ensure that the fit is perfect. The patient's ocular muscles attach to the implant, enabling his artificial eye to move in unison with his real eye.